Hare Krishna. So we are reading from the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 18th chapter, text number 75. Vyasa Prasada Chutavan Etad Guyam Aham Param Yogam Yogeshwarat Krishna Sakshat kato yatha svayam Vyasa prasadach chuttavan Etad guyam aham param Yogam yogeshwarat krishna Sakshat kato yatha svayam Vyasa prasada chutavan Etad guyam aham param Yogam yogeshwarat krishna Sakshat kata yatha svayam Vyasa prasada by the mercy of Vyasadev, Shrutavan, have heard etat this goyam confidential, aham, I, param, the supreme, yogam, mysticism, yoga ishwarat, from the master of all mysticism, Krishnat, from Krishna, Sakshat, directly, Katayatam, speaking, Swayam, personally, translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Sila Aisya Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki, translation. By the mercy of Vyas, I have heard these most confidential talks directly from the master of all mysticism, Krishna, who was speaking personally to Arjuna. Purport. Vyas was the spiritual master of Sanjay, and Sanjay admits that it was by Vyasa's mercy that he could understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This means that one has to understand Krishna, not directly, but through the medium of the spiritual master. The spiritual master is a transparent medium, although it is true that the experience is still direct. This is the mystery of the disciplic succession. When the spiritual master is bona fide, then one can hear Bhagavad Gita directly, as Krishna heard it. There are many mystics and yogis all over the world, but Krishna is the master of all yoga systems. Krishna's instruction is explicitly stated in Bhagavad Gita. Surrender unto Krishna. One who does so is a topmost yogi. This is confirmed in the last verse of the sixth chapter, Yogi Nam Mapisarvesham. Narad is the direct disciple of Krishna and the spiritual master of Vyas. Therefore, Vyas is as bona fide as Arjuna because he comes in the disciplic succession and Sanjay is the direct disciple of Vyas. Therefore, by the grace of Vyas, Sanjay's senses were purified and he could see and hear Krishna directly. One who directly hears Krishna can understand this confidential knowledge. If one does not come to the disciplic succession, he cannot hear Krishna. Therefore, his knowledge is always imperfect. At least as far as understanding Bhagavad Gita is concerned. In Bhagavad Gita, all the yoga systems, Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga are explained. 
Krishna is the master of all such mysticism. It is to be understood, however, that as Arjuna was fortunate enough to understand Krishna directly, so by the grace of Vyas, Sanjay was also able to hear Krishna directly. Actually, there is no difference between hearing directly from Krishna and hearing directly from Krishna via a bona fide spiritual master like Vyas. The spiritual master is the representative of Vyasadeva also. Therefore, according to the Vedic system, on the birthday of the spiritual master, the disciples conduct the ceremony called Vyasa Puja. Oma Gyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Salakya Chakshuran Militam Yanam Dasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Sapadantikam Bandeyam Sri Guru Sri Yotavada Gamalan Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Satam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitam Sha He Krishna Kuruna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpade Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastude Tata Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Shari Brishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpatrubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Paritanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Adaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Varinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare Hare Vyasa Prasada Chutavan Etar Guyam Maham Param Yogam Yogeshwara Krishna Sakshat Katayata Swayam By the mercy of Vyasa I have heard these most confidential talks directly from the master of all mysticism Krishna who is speaking personally to Arjuna <coughs> So here Sanjay is speaking and explaining a very important point. Vyasat Prasajat Shutavan that um, Shutavan I have heard by the mercy of Vyasadev. So by the mercy of the spell master so it is possible to make advancement in spiritual life. Mm. Without the spiritual master one can hardly make any progress. Of course it is mentioned in the scriptures that um, simply by chanting the holy names one can advance in spiritual life. Even before taking initiation from the spiritual master but simply by chanting the holy names one can advance in spiritual life. So of course, because Krishna and Krishna Nama are non-different. And Krishna is Adi Guru. He is the first spiritual master. And he is there in our heart also. Chaitya Guru, Antaryami, Paramatma, the super soul. is trying to guide us always. Uh, so even if one is not yet a spiritual master, still Krishna is there to guide us. The super soul is there. But we can hardly hear what the spiritual master is saying. Of course, sometimes we say intuition is there uh, and so we may get some guidance, understand that yes, that I should do, this I should do. Uh, <coughs> but in order to actually make uh, tangible advancement in spiritual life, one has to take shelter of the spiritual master. Krishna himself in the fourth chapter is speaking to 
Ajuna tadvidi paripatena pariprasnan sevaya padekshanti degyanam gyanina tattva darshanaha. Tattva darshanaha. One has to go to the person. Tattva darshanaha. Who has darshan of the param tattva, the supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna, uh, the seer of the absolute truth, the pure devotee of the Lord. Mm. So one has to go to him. In a humble way, Prindipatena Pariprasna Sevaya. Very humbly one has to go to him. And then one has to ask questions how to make advancement. And one has to be always in the Seva Bhav. Seva Vritti should be there, wanting to serve uh, the spiritual master of Krishna. Because Jivera so poi Krishna Nityadas. By nature we need to some of Krishna. So it is natural to serve. Uh, so and through the via, via media of the spiritual master we can serve uh, Krishna through the spiritual master first serving him and following his instructions therefore Rupa Swami who is the very confidential devotee of Mahaprabhu and Sisi Radha Krishna so he has explained about the different limbs of devotional service and he's explaining there that um, <coughs> The first limb of devotional service, the first anga, is Gurupad Ashray, taking shelter of the lotus feet of the spiritual master, and then inquiring from him, and then following his instructions. Uh, and the Acharyas have explained, Yasya Prasada, Bhagavad Prasada, Yasya Prasadam Nagadigodopi, Dayam Stavam Stasya Yasya Stasandyam Vande Guru Sri Charanara Vindam. So we have our obeisances to the spiritual master. And by his mercy, Yasya Prasadat, again hear the word Vyas Prasad, by the mercy of Vyas, uh, I could hear, I could understand the confidential talk between Krishna and Arjuna. So Yasya Prasadat, by whose mercy, the Guru's mercy, the Spirit Master's mercy, Bhagavad Prasadam, we get Krishna's mercy. Yasya Prasadat, Yasya Aprasadat, if the Spirit Master is not satisfied, then we can actually not advance. Uh, so, <coughs> so, but the spiritual master is very merciful and, and he's seeing the disciple who is endeavoring and then he will bestow his mercy. Uh, Krishna Kripa Sri Murti, he's the embodiment of the mercy of Krishna. Uh, so Krishna is there in the heart, but because we cannot hear him, then externally appears as the spiritual master that is the mercy of the Lord actually the spiritual master is empowered by Krishna uh, and then he will give guidance uh, and then we can serve Krishna uh, and as Prabhupada is explaining here in the purport that um, that one has to understand Krishna not directly so of course we read the Bhagavad Gita and then we can get some, gui some, some understanding but through the medium of the spiddle master. So the spiddle master is transparent medium. And then Prabhupada is explaining all that is true that the experience is still direct. So it is quite mysterious Pr Prabhupada is explaining and therefore even uh, so he's explained in the verses uh, he has translated that the Krishna is the master of all mysticism yoga ishwarat so yoga so Prabhupada here has explained as mysticism so it is very mystical this this uh, this process so just like when we serve the deities also it is explained that we need the mercy of the spirit master and then uh, so then we can serve Krishna just like the pujari so he's serving he's doing arctic he's dressing the deities and he will say also, oh, yes, I'm yeah, asking, devotees are asking, so you dress the deities today? And the pujari will say, yeah, yesterday I dressed, or no, not today, yesterday I dressed, or tomorrow I will dress the deities. So in one sense, so the pujari is, is directly dressing, but at the same time it is the mercy of the spiritual master who is actually serving Krishna, and he is giving us the opportunity to assist him in the service or he is allowing us to serve Krishna so by his mercy 
Because on our own, we actually not qualified to serve Krishna directly. Mm. But by the mercy of the Spirit Master, then we can serve Krishna. Uh, Mahaprabhu one time, <coughs> when I was in Navadvip, Mayapur, so he suddenly explained that after he had started the Sankita movement, and then he told everyone to chant the holy names in a regulated way, uh, like we're chanting on the Japmala, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Uh, chanting 16 rounds of Prabhupada, by Prabhupada's mercy and with the mercy manifestation of Mahaprabhu and Krishna, Srimati Radharani. So the Mahaprabhu said then, one day he exclaimed, that if you are not chanting one lakh, Krishna will not accept your offering. So for your information, one lakh is hundred thousand names, the Mahamantra. So that means chanting not only 16 rhymes, but 64. Actually one lakh is around 58 rounds, but still usually 16 is auspicious, then 32, 48, 64. And then the devotees were chanting. And then, so that was the custom usually, trying to chant 64 rounds, but it's not easy uh, to chant so many rounds. If one is, especially one is household or one is busy in the temple also, if there are not many devotees, how we can chant so much? So therefore sometimes you have to make some adjustment, and then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sastaku Prabhupada, Prabhupada Spirit Master also told his sannyasis especially, we're preaching that you should try to change 64 rounds because Mahaprabhu had told that you should chant 64, then Krishna will accept. Of course, that was mostly for those who are Brahminically inclined. So Mahaprabhu, he wanted them, but others they may not be able. Or for example, the woman that at home, they're taking care of the family. How it is possible? Very difficult. But they may try, but then certain these devotees, so he was expecting from them. And similarly Bhakti Siddhanta, he told the sannyasis, and then especially he told the pujaris also, because they were serving Krishna, and Mahaprabhu told that Krishna will not accept. And therefore even Prabhupada in the beginning, so he was telling the disciples, you should try to chant 64. They tried a few days, they went back to Prabhupada. Prabhupada, it is not possible. We cannot chant so many rounds and do so much seva, six, eight hours. And Prabhupada understood, yes, it is not easy for them. So then he said, 32. Then he tried to a few days, again he went back and then he told Prabhupada, Prabhupada, it is not possible to chant 32 <laughs> rounds either. It is too much for us. Then Prabhupada said, 16 but not less. So by the mercy of Prabhupada, then by six, chanting 16 rounds, we can advance nicely and we can serve the deities. And Krishna is accepting because of Prabhupada, because Prabhupada told Krishna, how Krishna, even in Australia actually, he told one time the disciples uh, that, yes, yeah, so, and uh, that I've spoken to Krishna mm, because he had gone to Australia, I think it was the first time there and the devotees were quite new and then he told Krishna, oh, dear Krishna, these devotees are new and they're not so experienced. And uh, so, but, uh, so I don't have the time to train them up completely, but somehow, whatever they are doing, what little, whatever little instructions I have given them and they are trying to follow, so kindly please accept that. So because Christ Prabhupada is pure devotee of the Lord and empowered, so because there's, a, there's an exchange between Krishna and his pure devotee. And even then bet between then Krishna and, and us, the ordinary devotees. But then Krishna saw, the Krishna, he, he saw, yes, that Prabhupada is right and so on, because Prabhupada is yeah, asking me to accept and so I will accept whatever the devotees are offering me. So even some faults may be there. Mm. So but we try our best and then because of Prabhupada, because of the pure devotees, so Krishna is accepting. So, but then at the same time, we should try to improve more and more. And therefore, Prabhupada, every time over the time of initiation, he was telling the devotees only one thing they have to do. What is that? Minimum 16 rounds. He didn't say chant 16 rounds. 
and he wanted them to tell also chant minimum 16 rounds minimum means at least means we should chant more actually and therefore then even he was suggesting that on Ikadashi we should chant 25 so sometimes you can chant more if you have some time so <coughs> yes and so the point was about uh, so be the by the mercy of the spiritual master so actually through him by his mercy we can directly serve Krishna so we can serve the deity in the temple. Krishna is there, directly there. And we can serve him. Uh, by the mercy of the spiritual master. So uh, assisting him in serving Krishna. Because he is directly serving Krishna perfectly. And it is just like an apprenticeship. You go somewhere. Uh, and you try to get a job. And then first you have to uh, get trained up. And then you are accepted as a qualified uh, person to do the certain job. So it is there by Krishna's uh, mercy. So he's coming in the Acha Vigraha and then he's accepting the service um, of the disciples by the mercy uh, of the spiritual master who is engaging the s disciples in the service of the Lord. So this way, through the spiritual master, we can serve Krishna, but we are also directly serving Krishna. Similarly, also through the transparent medium, so we can we can hear from Krishna directly, uh, or through the spiritual master, we can hear. So there is no difference hearing from Krishna or the bona fide representative, the pure devotee of the Lord. There is no difference. And then, just like here, Vyasadev. Uh, so, he's explaining about Vyasadev by the mercy of Vyasadev. <laughs> so, by the mercy of Vyasadev, so he was disciple of Vyasadev, was there present also at this time. And uh, so, so, he was able, although he was not there uh, on the battlefield, but he was sitting with Dhritarashtra. Uh, and then this Dhritarashtra, as we know, he was inquiring. In the first verse of Bhagavad Gita, what happened on the battlefield of Kurukshetra? Dharma Kshetri, Kurukshetra, Samaveta Yutsavaha, Mamaka, Pandava Shaiva, Kimagarvata, Sanjayaha. So Dhritra Arshtra was asking. That is the first verse of the Bhagavad Gita. What did they do? My sons and the sons of Pandu in Kurukshetra, Dharma Kshetra, the uh, it is a holy place. Uh, and then, of course, then Sanjay, he was relating. So he was not directly there, but by the mercy of, of his spiritual master, he could see what is happening. And he could hear what Krishna was speaking to Arjuna. Uh, so but that, I that is by the mercy of the spiritual master. Uh, so by the mercy of the spiritual master, so it is also possible for us. Uh, so here we are directly, we can read the Bhagavad Gita by the mercy of, of yes, of, of Krishna, by the mercy of Vyasadev and Sanjay, uh, so especially Vyasadev. So we can also now read the Bhagavad Gita and it is practically directly hearing. Uh, and then especially, so by the mercy of Vyasadev, <coughs> and then the disciplic succession and ultimately Srila Prabhupada. Now we can read the Bhagavad Gita and we can properly understand <coughs> the Bhagavad Gita because of Srila Prabhupada's purpose also which are uh, just actually for us so Prabhupada according to time, place and circumstances so he wrote the purpose so we can properly understand because if there are no purpose it is a little difficult to understand the Bhagavad Gita even to get a good translation of all the verses uh, that may be there I mean, even before I joined, mm, so um, I was reading many editions of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, translated by various persons. Uh, but actually, I could not really understand what's going on there and what Krishna is saying. And it was not clear to me. But then when I read the Bhagavad Gita, as it is from Prabhupada, then everything became very clear. Uh, and we can see even here, in India, so, so many persons, they, they are uh, reading the Bhagavad Gita, 
but then they are not completely understanding the message of Krishna because they are not in the association of the pure devotees of the Lord and then they are not serving uh, they simply have faith that yeah, Krishna is God and we are the servants of God and that is good but that is not sufficient we have to go further and that is in the association first Shraddha is there faith God exists and then Krishna is the Supreme Lord we are not this body, we are spirit soul, we have a relationship with the supreme being, with God. So that is the beginning, the faith is there, but that is not sufficient. In spirit life, to become perfect, to realize God or to realize ourselves. But then we have to be in the association of the sadhu, sadhu sangha, bhajana kriya. Then we have to do bhajan, then we have to serve according to the instructions of the spirit master. And then all the contamination in the consciousness in the heart is cleansed and then we become fixed. And then we can uh, get also a transcendental taste for engaging in the Lord's service, for chanting the holy names. And then we can become attached to Krishna and detached from the material world and then we can have direct percep perception of Krishna and of the self, of our own self. So that is by the mercy, all by the mercy of the Spirit Master, it is possible. Mm. And uh, so then, um, <coughs> yes, everything becomes very clear by the mercy of the Spirit Master. But we have to endeavor. So the mercy is always there, but we have to endeavor. And then we get more mercy, then we have to endeavor more. We can get more mercy and then we can advance more and more uh, till the perfection. Uh, so and then, so not only we can see um, here, for example, the conversation between Krishna and Arjuna, uh, but we can go even further. Uh, and that is what actually Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is non different from the Supreme Lord, uh, from Sisi Radha and Krishna, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahayanya. Uh, and he came to actually establish the dharma for the age of Kali, uh, the process by which we can attain perfection, the actual religion of this age of Kali. Uh, so that is uh, chanting the holy names of the Lord, the Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And, uh, but then also, it is important that we chant the holy names properly, with the proper consciousness, with all humility. And also then we should have the mood, uh, the proper bhav, uh, so that we can get to the highest stage. Uh, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, so he came actually to show us how to chant the holy names uh, and that is actually in Braj Bhav. So it is mentioned that Mahaprabhu, so he established the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of the holy names, but then he came to actually give this Braj Bhav, uh, showing how the devotees of Braj, uh, the mother and father of Krishna, Yashoda Nanda Maharaj, uh, and then the gopis and the friends of Krishna, so how they are serving Krishna, uh, so that is the, uh, the <coughs> uh, highest love is found in Braj towards the Supreme Lord, towards Krishna. Uh, whereas in Vaikuntha, so there is also the perfection is there and they also have love, the Vaikuntha Vasis. Uh, but there is also the mood that Krishna, the Vishnu uh, is the Supreme Lord and we are the servant and there is some own reverence there in the relationship whereas in Braj it is completely um, intimate uh, and full of love uh, so like Mother Yashoda and Nanda Baba they love Krishna just like uh, their child that Krishna is their child although Krishna is the supreme being but they were not aware covered by yoga maya, the internal energy of the Lord. Uh, so that is the highest form, the love of the inhabitants of Braj. 
and amongst them especially the gopis and amongst all the gopis Srimati Rarani. Uh, so by the mercy of the Spirit Master, then it is possible to, to see the pastimes, to see Krishna and then to see the pastimes of Krishna in the spiritual realm, mm. so directly, uh, so which is ultimately the perfection, but it will take some time of course to come to the platform. Even so, for example, Sanjay, so we can see that he was actually on the practically the highest platform uh, because he was able to see uh, Krishna directly uh, on the battlefield and Arjuna and he could hear directly what Krishna was speaking to Arjuna. So that means he was on the high, uh, highest level of, of, uh, of uh, spirit life. So he could directly uh, hear uh, what Krishna was speaking to Arjuna. Uh, just like we all know, uh, TV is there or now of course in the mobile it is there, we can see some, some video and then directly we can experience what somebody said somewhere else in America or Europe or wherever. Uh, directly we can see uh, through the via media of a uh, simple phone. Of course now it is quite, uh, previously the phones were very simple. Uh, first there were only the landline was there and then the mobile came and, and so many things now we can do with the mobile. It is quite amazing, but it is just a material instrument. So, but already with that we can, s we can actually see so many uh, wonderful things. Uh, and even of course the devotees are making videos of the deities or they're making dramas with Krishna and so we can then capture that and that can be shown in different places and devotees they can relish them. So, but that is one level, but then even a higher level is there in the heart. Uh, and we should try to come to that level, that we can see Krishna in our heart and then Krishna's wonderful associates and his qualities and ultimately his pastimes. That is actually the perfection of life. But it will take some time, but it is possible uh, to then witness the wonderful pastimes simply by chanting the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, so, um, but of course now we are here on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, but just that, uh, that Mahaprabhu came actually to, to give Braj Bhakti, so we're mentioning that also, uh, because that is actually the goal uh, of our life. Uh, so we, but we appreciate all of the different expansions of Krishna. Uh, and all their wonderful pastimes, especially in the material world. Uh, so we can always relish that. Uh, so, but then, um, because the two aspects are there, Seva Sadaka Rupina, Siddha Rupina, Chattrahi, Tad Bhavilipsona Karya, Vrajalokana Sarataha. First as Sadaka we are there, chanting the holy names and then reading Bhagavad Gita and then worshipping the deities, doing various services. So that is the Shadak Sharia with the present body which we have. But uh, we know we are not this body, we are spirit soul. And then all, uh, so ultimately we have to see that um, we can come to the platform of the soul. And then with our spiritual form, such an Ananda Sarup that we can serve Krishna. Siddha Rupana Chattrahi. So, um, and then actually serving Krishna uh, with our, uh, in our spiritual body in Braj. So the Acharyas in our Sampradaya, they have all explained that and Srila Prabhupada also. So but it will take some time. Mm. So, but at least we should know what is the goal and we're trying to reach that goal. Uh, so, but the process is twofold. One is external and internal. So externally we are acting in a certain way and then when we are purified in consciousness and then we can internally then become absorbed also. Uh, so, um, but always the devotee, they are, uh, they are satisfied and, and uh, because they are always trying to serve Krishna. Uh, and uh, so, <coughs> but of course, even the devotees who are advanced, sometimes they are feeling some, some transcendental dissatisfaction. 
for example, they will see Krishna. But then sometimes Krishna will disappear from their vision. And then they will feel some transcendental sadness. They are crying even. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Is Mahaprabhu himself. When he was in Jagannapuri especially. Vipranamba Kshetra. Feeling separation from Krishna. Where are you, Krishna? Uh, and then the six Goswamis also. Hey Radhe Brajadevi ke chalite nanda sunokutaha. Where are you, Krishna? Lalita Vishaka, Shimati Rarani. So, so these different moods may be there. Uh, <coughs> so, but here currently, so we are here uh, in Kurukshetra and Sanjay is speaking here and <coughs> and he's explaining that by the mercy of Vyasadev, so he's able to see that. Mm. Well, I used to also chant many verses from the Bhagavad Gita every day, uh, especially sometime when I was in the West, uh, preaching in America, and then I learned many shlokas. I used to uh, know five chapters by heart, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth, the twelfth, and the fifteenth. And then I was chanting one or two or three chapters every day, and then doing preaching, of course, deity worship also. <coughs> and then um, at some point, then I came back to Vrindavan, and then I was still continuing, because still I was, you know, uh, doing my deity worship also, and then chanting some chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. And then, of course, when you chant the chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, the shlokas, then what do you remember? Krishna and Arjuna. On the battlefield there, just before the fight of the uh, Kauravas and the Pandavas and so many soldiers there. So I used to chant the chapters of Bhagavad Gita and I was remembering Krishna and Arjuna, which is quite good, <laughs> right? It's nice to remember Krishna and Arjuna. But then I was in Braj and I was thinking, well, it's okay, but uh, I'm in Braj. I should remember Krishna and the gopis and Maria Shoda and Nanda Baba and Krishna's friends. And then I chanted less of the shlokas of the Bhagavad Gita. Now I chant just every day a few shlokas, the most important ones, because we have to preach also, and we should, <laughs> we should be able to recite the verses. I'm not this body, right? I'm spirit soul. And sarva dharman parijaja mame kam saranam vaja ham tam sarva pabe abhyo mokshishyame maasuchaha so, because we are in Kali Yuga, we tend to forget the things. Uh, so, yeah, so <laughs> previously they were, remem they were hearing and remembering whole life, Shrutidhar, previous ages, but Kali Yuga not possible. So we have to constantly repeat and then we can remember. But then uh, even old age is coming, those who are getting older, they know. Then even we try, but then we still we forget what to do, we cannot... <laughs> Woke properly, the back is paining, the knees are paining. So, yeah, what to do? But still, we have to go on somehow. Yeah. So, <coughs> yeah, so it is always nice to remember Krishna and Arjuna, but um, then ultimately, then at certain point, then we have to come also to this um, level of trying to remember Krishna in Braj, always, so that we can go there. Because where you want to go? So and Krishna says also in the Bhagavad Gita, whatever you remember at the time of that, so you will go there. So if you remember Krishna and Dwarka, Krishna and Hastinapuri, you will go there. But we don't want to go to Braj. Who wants to go to Braj? Almost everyone. Who wants to go to <laughs> Dwarka? Who wants to go to Matra? No, mostly we want to go to Braj. You want to go to Matra? Yeah? Okay, well, we want to go to Braj. Matra is nice too, but, uh, but Braj is the most wonderful place. And the exchange there with the gopis and Nanda Baba Yashoda and the friends, so wonderful. Uh, so, like Krishna is playing with the friends. Sudam, Sridam, Madhumangal, and they're playing just like ordinary boys, and Krishna is embracing them. The Supreme Lord is embracing his friends. Uh, so wonderful. Whereas in Vaikuntha, not possible. They cannot em embrace Vishnu. Even Ramchandra Bhagavan, Hanuman, 
is there and others are there and they can well sometimes but very rarely Ramchandra may slightly embrace uh, uh, Hanuman but very rare but Krishna every day practically is embracing his friends uh, and the gopis also of course uh, so uh, so most wonderful so sweet and uh, so that uh, ultimately that is actually the goal to enter the pastimes of Krishna in Braj <coughs> not in Dvarka or Matra uh, but still first we have to understand that Krishna is God and we are very insignificant first that has to be clear and then we try to advance but then when we advance then we are forgetting that Krishna is God then we see Krishna is our best friend uh, so that is ultimately wanted to come to that platform but it will take some time but uh, so we should understand what is the goal and we should try to go towards that goal mm, as quickly as possible so but we have to be balanced so we have to follow Vaidhi Bhakti following the rules and regulations and then so we have to read the Bhagavad Gita we have to read the whole Srimad Bhagavatam and about hear about the different incarnations so that is all important so that we can be fixed in the understanding that Krishna is the Supreme Lord and I'm the servant of the Lord I'm not this body I'm spirit soul and I have to give up the enjoying tendency and do everything for Krishna's pleasure Krishnendiya Priti satisfy the senses of Krishna and then also Sarva Bhutehi Te Rataha not just think about ourself or our advancement how I can advance that is there but then we should try to help others we should try to serve the spiritual master we should try to serve the Vaishnavas we should try to give this Krishna consciousness to others <coughs> so that is that is a Vaishnav uh, so it's not thinking about himself only but he's thinking about the Supreme Lord and the spiritual master and he can, how he can satisfy them and then how to help others also help other Vaishnavas help the conditioned souls in various ways uh, so then then in this way then we can advance uh, so and uh, so step by step we should try to see that we can advance with the help of the spiritual master he will he will help us he will guide us just like we go to school we have the teacher there he's helping us so the parents are there they're helping the child to 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 grow up but then at a certain point we have to stand on our own feet and the children they have to become yeah they have to, they are growing up and they have to become um, practically so to say um, confident <coughs> and and be able to take care uh, of themselves and not just depend uh, always on the parents or others but they have to stand on their own feet but always still take the guidance of the seniors uh, so that an intelligent person he will do even so he may be grown up and then he may have his own business but he will uh, many times uh, he will still take the guidance of the father or some other elders so also in spiritual life we have to try to stand on our own feet and perform our sadhana bhakti of performing the uh, the regulative principles as given by the spirit master and then uh, to know that for every small thing then we ask the spiritual master no uh, but we have to become mature but still we are always there under the guidance of the spiritual master so that we can advance more and more and then ultimately when one is very advanced one can see the spiritual master will be there manifest in the heart and then the guidance be, will be there inside the heart also uh, and then you can see the previous acharyas and then you will be able to see Mahaprabhu and Krishna and this way take direct guidance also from within the heart uh, through the spiritual master uh, and then you may get direct guidance also from Mahaprabhu or Krishna so all by the mercy of the spiritual master so is the transparent by media <coughs> helping us so that we can also directly have the exchange with Krishna direct exchange uh, so in Prabhupada also many times he explained that the relationship is there and he was saying that that uh, so if you become advanced then you can directly speak to Krishna 
And then Krishna will speak to you. And one time he was saying, um, if you take darshan, if you see Krishna smiling at you, then your life is perfect. So the exchange will be there directly by the mercy of the spirit master. So, uh, so that, uh, so if we are performing our devotional service very nicely, then we can experience all these things in due course of time. Uh, so, very important verses there. So, explained by Sanjay that by the mercy of the spiddle master, in this case Vyasadev, so he was able to directly hear what Krishna is speaking to Arjuna. Uh, so, the Prabhupada at the end is explaining also according to the Vedic system. The b on the birthday of the spiritual master, disciples are conducting the Vyasa Puja. So the appearance day of the spiritual master that is observed as Vyasa Puja. Because the spiritual master is the representative of Vyasa Dev. So even in India, so you may see that uh, everyone is worshipping the spiritual master on his appearance day. Well, whatever, whenever it may be. But then even, for example, the first day of the Chaturmas, known as Guru Purnima. So at that time, usually, the spirit master is also worshipped. Because that day, the Guru Purnima, that is actually Vyas Purnima. It is the appearance day of Vyasadev, who uh, is the literary incarnation of the Lord, who has presented to us the Vedas. Uh, although the Vedas are eternal, and even, for example, then the, the four Vedas are there. So there's one Veda, but it was divided in four. Uh, so then the four Vedas were there. And then the fifth. So these are the Itihasas, the histories and the Puranas. Uh, so which are there to, uh, for those who are not able to uh, completely uh, dedicate themselves in the study of the Vedas, which were, uh, was only for the Brahmanas. Uh, and only for the male persons. So then the Itihasas, the histories were uh, manifested and the Puranas. And there are even six Puranas for those who are highly elevated in the mode of goodness. And then six Puranas for those who are not so elevated but who are uh, still very much influenced by the mode of, ig uh, mode of passion. And then six Puranas for those who are still very much influenced by the mode of ignorance. So, but by then studying or by hearing from the elevated souls, from the scriptures, then the disciples, they could advance. Uh, so, the common person could advance. So, that is by the mercy of Vyasadev. It was uh, actually uh, revealed in written form before it was simply given by oral reception. Krishna is Adiguru and then he spoke to Lord Brahma. And then it is explained that actually the Vedas, the four Vedas, they emanate from Brahma's mouth by the mercy of the Lord. It is explained, as we know, he has four, four faces. One head, but four faces. So from the front face, so there the four Vedas were manifested. And then after that, by contemplating uh, the Vedas and then by uh, realizing so many things he realized also he realized this his transcendental form by performing austerities and by uh, chanting different mantras even the Gayatri mantras and and by the mercy of the Lord and he was directly instructed by the Lord also as explained in the uh, Shema Bhagavatam second canto uh, Chatu Shloki so, but then it is explained also then after that, so then he manifested the Ihitihasas, the histories and the Puranas, the Mahabharat, which is known as the fifth Veda. And that came from his other three mouth also. Uh, uh, so then after that, so, uh, so then he, he gave it to the knowledge to the different disciples, uh, one of them Narada Muni, but others also. And they get the four Kumaras and they also gave to their disciples. And Vyasadeva is known as the disciple of Narada Muni. 
and seeing that the Kali Yuga is approaching and the persons will not be intelligent, so therefore it has to be written down. So therefore with the help of Sri Ganesh, so this transcendental knowledge was written down for our benefit. Uh, so therefore everyone in India who is believing in God and who is uh, accepting the Shastras, the scriptures, the Vedas, they are worshipping Vyasadeva and Guru Purnima. Uh, so all those who are interested in spirit life in India, Bharadvasa, they are worshipping Vyasadeva and Guru Purnima and their spiritual master because the spiritual master is the representative of Vyasadeva. Uh, so traditionally, as explained by Prabhupada, so it is known as Vyasa Puja because not only the spiritual master is worshipped actually, but all the previous acharyas. Therefore Prabhupada, so at least he mentioned that we should chant the Mangala Charan to, and then offering respect to all the previous acharyas up to Mahaprabhu and then Krishna on the uh, appearance day of the spiritual master which is known as Vyasa Puja. Even traditionally as established by Prabhupada, Spiritual Master Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sastakur Prabhupada, he was doing even more elaborate uh, Vyasa Puja celebration just to show that how we should actually respect everyone. So then he was uh, doing elaborate worship and worshipping his Spiritual Master and then his Spiritual Master like this from our Sampradaya but then also he was uh, respecting and worshipping the, the Srila Vyasadeva on this day and the four Acharyas of the four Sampradaya and our Sampradaya, Brahma Madhva Gauriya Vaishnava Sampradaya uh, showing respect to Madhvacharya in the Sri Sampradaya from Narayan Lakshmi then Ramanujacharya and then the four Kumaras uh, there um, the uh, Nimbarkacharya is there and then in the Rudra Sampradaya, Vishnu Swami offering respect to the Acharyas of the four Sampradayas and Vyasadev. And then Sugadev Goswami also. And the four disciples of Vyasadev, they all respected in elaborate worship of the Vyasa Puja. And then of course, Mahaprabhu and his associates and Krishna and his associates. Uh, so, because these are all great personalities. And we should understand that we need the mercy of the spiritual master foremost, but then we need the mercy of the previous acharyas also. The disciplic succession, the mercy, the knowledge is coming through disciplic succession. Uh, but ultimately, of course, through the spiritual master, who is directly guiding us, uh, but we should respect all the acharyas. Uh, so therefore, the devotees, especially on the Vyasa Puja, they will worship not only the spiritual master but the previous acharyas also. And even in daily worship the pujari, so he's doing uh, the worship of Krishna, uh, the puja. But before Krishna puja is Guru puja, we worship the spiritual master. And then the previous acharyas and then only we can worship Mahaprabhu and then we can worship Krishna. And then we can properly advance in spiritual life even by chanting the holy names. Before chanting the holy names, we chant Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadada, Shiva Zadi, Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. So we offer respect to the Gaura Bhaktas, the associates of Mahaprabhu, the, the, the spiritual master, um, Gaura Priya, who is very dear devotee of Mahaprabhu. Uh, so we are, uh, offer respect before chanting the holy names. We should remember the Sri Guru, the spiritual master the previous acharyas, then we can chant the, prop, the holy names properly. Uh, because Krishna and Krishna Nam don't different, just like you worship the deities. First you have to worship Guru, then you can worship Krishna. Similarly, you cannot properly worship, or not properly even chant the holy names without remembering Sri Guru, and then Sri Guranga. Remember Sri Guru and then Guranga, and then you can chant Hare Krishna nicely. So, Guru Prasad, Vyas Prasad, that is absolutely necessary. So that is here the message of Sanjay to us. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any questions? Yes. Yes, behind here, yes. yes. So, uh, I heard the devotee saying that the highest service is to save others. The highest service is to save others, yes. 
Yes. Yes, yes, that is, yeah, that is true. So highest service, sometimes we hear that is serving others, saving others. But then some will say, yes, but first uh, the highest service is to, serve, is to save yourself. Yes, it is there that uh, first of all we have to try to become strong in spirit life. We have to try ourselves to be fixed in devotional service. Uh, and then we have to see that we are advancing nicely and then we can help others nicely. Just like for example, uh, yes in the West in many places uh, where there's for example sea, uh, is the sea is there or the ocean is there, there are some people who, know, who are very expert in swimming and then they are there to help other people who are not expert who are going to almost drowning. So they are there. So, but if you don't know how to swim nicely, you cannot help a drowning person. No, you cannot. Because then there's even chance that will, you will drown yourself. Because he will catch you and then, you know, you will not be able to, to swim and do anything. So first you have to become an expert swimmer. And then you can try to help others who are drowning. And they have, like in many places, you know, where the ocean is there or the... See is there, especially I know in the West it is quite common. Lifeguard. A lifeguard, yeah, it is there. But if you have to become first an expert swimmer yourself, and you have to learn the tricks, how to save others, then only we can save, you know. So, and then similarly also, for example, a poor person, he needs some money. So, but if yourself don't have much money, how much you can help? So similarly in spiritual life also, if you're not very strong, then how much you can help others? Only very little bit. Uh, so therefore we have to become strong ourselves. In spiritual life we have to become fixed. And then we can really help others nicely. Uh, of course also Prabhupada said, and it is mentioned that whatever you know, that you try to give to others. So that is there. Uh, but not at the expense of, you know, trying to preach and then <coughs> you're meeting materialistic persons and your sudden is not strong, then you become influenced and then you may not be able to, to remain fixed. And even we have seen many, they just left. <coughs> Especially in the West, because the influence is very strong there of the external energy. And then they were trying to distribute books and then meeting so many materialistic persons and then becoming weak and influenced by them and then <coughs> also going away and again taking up sp uh, material activities so therefore we have to be fixed strong and then try to advance more and more and then we can help others so our bhajan should be strong and then we can also do some good preaching without then uh, um, coming in a dangerous uh, situation so that we should try to understand. So first we have to be safe and then we can help others. Uh, okay? Yes. Coming back to Prabhupada's stay here with it, Prabhupada started the duty of Radha Gopinath. And there was no initiative devotion. Yeah, in Australia, yes. And Prabhupada said, okay, Radha Gopinath, I'm handing over to these Malichas and Yamas. Yes. Yes, that was a move. Yes, yes, that was, yes, yes. You were staying in your, you were in Australia for some time, so so you know, yeah. I have heard from others, yeah. Yes, yes. So it is like this, yes. Mm. So by Prabhupada's mercy we are able to advance in our spiritual life. So we should always be very thankful and and try yes, but we should try to advance more and more and then we can really help others. Uh, and uh, so the mood should be there, so that is important that I explained in the beginning also. A Vaishnav is not thinking only of himself. Oh, I have to advance, I have to advance. Yeah, that is there. But at the same time, so when we are little fixed, we should try to help others. By distributing books, by giving prasadam to others, uh, by giving knowledge to others. And uh, so, or even just having the proper consciousness. Uh, trying to serve Guru and Goranga and Krishna, but trying to help others also. And then, so, so it is a matter of the attitude. Then even, for example, you are nicely 
following the process of devotional service, you may not be a great preacher. You know, you may not be a, a great book distributor. Book distributor, but if you simply have the mood uh, of the of the spiritual master, the previous acharyas that. I should try to serve my spiritual master and I should try to help others. If not directly, then you try to serve those who are, uh, who are um, helping others. And so in this way, so then we can, then Krishna will be pleased and then we can advance nicely in spiritual life. So devotee is, uh, is selfless uh, and he's trying to, yes, rather than taking, he's trying to give. He's giving others and he's not just simply uh, taking, taking the mercy of Guru and Krishna and keeping for himself. No, but he will try to give others. And not expecting anything in return. Simply wanting to give uh, to Krishna, to the devotees, to others. Uh, so that is, uh, th so that should be our mood. Anything else? Yes. Yes. Yes, they take diksha outside. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what happens to them spiritually? Uh, then they have to go back to the or the house the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is to go back to Godhead is not so easy. Not so easy. That we have to remember. So first of all, uh, even Prabhupada is explaining in the introduction, his long introduction, 40 pages, that is explaining uh, in one place about the five relationships with Krishna. Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya and Madhur, Madhuryaras. So the neutral relationship, uh, to some extent it is there externally in Braj, like the cows, the trees, they seem to be neutral because they are, right, the tree. Like we know what the tree can do. And, but in Raj is a little different, or the cows. Well, we cannot really talk to the cows, right, to have a conversation. But in Raj is a little different. If there's a need, the cow can talk. Even the tree can walk and talk. The birds also, they glorify Krishna. So to some extent, Dasya Santaras is there. But in other places, it is mentioned there are four rasas. Because externally they seem to be in Shantaras, but there's a relationship with Krishna. Even the trees, they want to serve Krishna, they are serving Krishna. And they want Krishna to come to them and touch them, embrace them. And Krishna sometimes is embracing the trees, is embracing the calves. The relationship is there. But to some extent it is uh, not fully manifest from one point of view. So therefore it is mentioned. Shantaras is there, but the other places it is mentioned that there are only four rasas. Because even the calves, so they have some friendship relationship, Sakya, and the cows, they have Vatsalya Bhav, they want to give the milk to Krishna. So to some extent Shantaras, but the other point of view, the Sakya Ras may be there, or Vatsalya Ras may be there. So, and uh, yeah, so then the servitorship is there, friendship, parental affection, and conjugal relationship. So we have to realize that. That is known as Sarup Siddhi. When you realize your spiritual form. Now we know we are Atma. We are not this body. <coughs> but who here? I'm asking you. Who has realized this form here? If it's a cowboy or a gopi. How many are there? Let's say even our movement. I'm sure they are there. I know. But not so many who come to this level. It is possible, but not so easy. It is possible, but not so easy to come to that level. That is known as Sarup Siddhi. Realization of the Sarup. Prabhupada has explained also here Sarup Gat. Same thing, a Sarup Siddhi or Sarup Gat. But only when you are on this level, then after giving up the body, you go to the pastimes of Krishna in one of the universes. And then comes Vashtu Siddhi, Vashtu Gat. That means then you... First you realize your sarup, but then you are still not in Krishna Lila. You can see Krishna Lila, but you are not there yet in Krishna Lila fully. You may mentally, with your spiritual form, try to do some seva to Krishna, but you are not there in the Lila. 
But then after giving up the body, you can go to the Leela and then the Vashtu city is there. You're practically serving Krishna. Relationship is there and then you will not take birth again. So that is very rare to come to Surup city and then enter the pastimes of Krishna. So first of all, we have to understand this. Uh, so then, as you say, so what happens, those who have taken initiation and then they will go somewhere, they will go to the Babaji's. Uh, for some reason, they were dissatisfied here for some reason. May be valid or may not be valid. Uh, you see, but we should not bother so much about this. You may say this may be unfortunate, but they may go there for some reason. We may not know. Uh, but we are not so much bothered about that. At least they have come to Krishna consciousness and they are trying to make some advancement in spiritual life. And they may not attain perfection in this life. But they may have to take a b again birth. But even if you are just here even, it is not necessarily that you will attain perfection in this life. So why you bother about what others are doing? You take care of yourself first. For example, Prabhupada, even on purpose, he has explained. Of course, he said you chant 16 rounds and you follow four regular principles, you will go back to Godhead. But how is your chanting? Your chanting should Shudanam? If you're not chanting Shudanam, you're not going to Krishna. You can chant for lifetimes also. And Prabhupada in two places in the third canto is explained. Uh, yeah, that um, he's writing, I'm just repeating. It is impossible to go back home to Godhead in one lifetime. But at least you should try your best to achieve the goal. It is possible, but it is also impossible. Because it is not easy, and only very few, they can actually make it to this highest level. Just like, for example, somebody wants to become, well, a cricket star. Well, not easy to become a cricket star, like Sachin Tendulkar, all the kids they want to become. But only few they can become successful. Or even, you know, in the whole world, football star. Before my, my time, I was playing soccer also. <laughs> I could have played in the junior national team, but I gave it up because I was interested in spirit life. I could have become a professional football player, but I gave it up. But then in my time, there was one Brazil, they were the greatest team. There was Pele, football star. And then after the German, you know, so <laughs> and now Lionel Messi and who else is there? Uh, Neymar from Brazil still, I still because, you know, Facebook is there, sometimes you see something what's happening. We are just, we, we, we still know what's going on. <laughs> but, you know, but our main concern is about Braj. So, so the thing is, uh, yeah, so the, uh, the, the point was that, uh, 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 so what was the point? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, leave is gone. Yeah, but then something else was there. What was? Yeah, go back to, yeah, no, it's not so easy to go back home to God in this lifetime. So it is not easy. So therefore I came to this point that to become, you know, a football star or cricket star. Or for example, to become a millionaire. Somebody who in the material world, they want to have so much money. And, uh, but not everyone can. It's not possible, <coughs> you know. So you want to achieve something in the material world even, but not everyone can. Be it depends on the Purva Samska, previous... Uh, impressions, previous activities, then you will get the result. Uh, maybe possible. So, similarly, even in spiritual life, so if you don't have <laughs> purva samskar, good impression from previous life, it is hardly possible that you come to the highest stage. Even, I mean, we have the, uh, the, s the association of a pure devotee and everything is favorable. But if the purva samskar is not there, then you might not be able to make it in this lifetime. But no problem, no worry. In the next lifetime you become perfect, maybe, or maybe after two, after three. So therefore, why you bother about what's happening to others who are living is gone? You don't have to bother so much. You take care of yourself. Okay, that is more important. Don't worry about them. And you see, but if they are sincere, I mean, even they did a little bit, even if they fall away, even they go back to the material world. But because they start, uh, Krishna will remember. And in the, in the next lifetime, they may be rectified if they did a mistake. 
or sometimes because they were maybe not treated nicely by some of the devotees they're living, we don't know. And so therefore we should, you know, we, should don't, we don't bother so much. We may have some concern, especially if we are <laughs> the institution, if we are in some position, the president of a temple. So you should be concerned if somebody is leaving the temple or the spiritual master should be concerned if the disciples are leaving. But at the same time also we should not be so much concerned, but we should try to f take care of ourselves or what we can do. Prophet himself used to say, don't, because sometimes some, uh, some devotees, even some sannyasis, they left Prabhupada. And some other devotees, they were surprised how he was such a great devotee and he left. Going back to the material world, they came to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, uh, don't be surprised to see who lives who leaves the society, but be surprised to see who stays in the society. So, and so we should try to take care of ourselves. And you know, don't worry about this person, that person, unless the person is close to us. For example, if your child is there and he wants to go somewhere else, then the concern should be there. Or if you're president and somebody is going somewhere else of the temple, then, you may, then it is your duty to try to find out why you want to go there. And you try to, to rectify, if possible, but you know, sometimes nothing you can do and you have to accept. And we should try to be broad-minded. And you know, I mean, I know some devotees, some proper disciples, also some others, and who are fixed, they're trying to help the children, but even some of the children, they just left. You know, went somewhere else. And then sometimes you just have to accept what to do. You know, but we have to be broad-minded, at least we should see if they are still chanting Hare Krishna, they are still serving Krishna, they are still, um, then, uh, they are still having the contact with other devotees. So we should try to be broad-minded and see that, you know, that at least, you know, s these persons, they may still try to serve Krishna. Although it may not be in our institution, but you know, what to do. So. If they are very close to us, yes. If they are very close to you, then it may be hurting, yes. They may be there, yeah. 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 But then, you know, so you have to be broad-minded and try to see why it is happening. <coughs> and, you know, and we should try to see, as I explained in the beginning, also, the Vyasa Puja, what it means. You're not just worshipping your spiritual master and your sampradaya. That is established by Bhakti Siddhanta Sastaku Prabhupada. He was worshipping the four Sampradaya Charyas and even in his main mat established by Bhakti Siddhanta Sastaku Prabhupada in Mayapur, Guru Garanga Gandharvika Giridari. The main temple is there, Guru Garanga and Radha and Krishna. And then in the four corners he has the Acharya of the four Sampradaya. And every day, like in the temple, we are offering six or seven times Boga. To the Lord, so six, seven times offering boga to the four acharyas of the four sampradayas. So we should respect all the Vaishnavas, even if they are not in our sampradaya. They are Vaishnavas, they are worshipping Vishnu or Krishna or Ramchandra. So we should have respect for them. We should have a loving relationship. We should have love for Krishna. And if you have true love for Krishna, you love all Vaishnavas. You love all the human beings. Even if they are not worshipping God. But you know, they are servants of Krishna, ultimately. But they are in illusion for some reason. Even the Christians, there are some good Christians also. So we should not be fanatic and try to see the good in everyone. <coughs> and try to find that. And see that they can be encouraged in their way. And then ultimately, they may come to the Vaishnav Dharma. To the Nitya Dharma, Sanatan Dharma. And especially in our Sampradaya, which is the most exalted, because Mahapu appeared. So we are most fortunate. But we should understand we are still, it doesn't mean we are very special. Our Sampradaya is special. Our Acharya is empowered and special. But we should understand we are very insignificant. And then we should try to become perfect ourselves and develop our love for Guru Goranga and Krishna. And when we have true love, for Guru Ranga and Krishna, we can love everyone. And we're not just seeing the outside, the institution. We are beyond the institution. We'll see all Vaishnavas. 
Okay? Hare Krishna. Okay, we should stop here. If you have any question, you can ask after. Everyone can come and take some Mahaprasad.